If you are trying to figure out how to breathe properly in labor, I guarantee you that you have not heard this tip. There are a ton of videos on YouTube talking through the different breathing techniques that you can utilize, why it's important to know how to breathe, and those are absolutely important videos to take into consideration. But there's one thing that I have utilized with my clients that has been a game changer to helping them be able to breathe properly in labor, which ultimately allows them to have a much smoother, calmer birthing experience. So stick around to the end of the video where we will go through how to actually utilize these two tips that you probably are not getting from any other breathing video on the internet. And we will practice them together so that you can take this into your birthday experience. Hey mama, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Chanel. I am a wife, a mama of three, soon to be four, a doula. And my goal on this channel is to help you overcome the fears and the concerns and the worries and unknowns that come along with this journey of motherhood starting with pregnancy and birth and give you the tools to feel confident, to feel empowered, and really to do this the way that you want to do it because your body was designed to do this and you were placed in this space for a particular reason and I want to give you the tools to feel empowered to do what you were already designed to do in a fearless and beautiful and positive way. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and join our family. We are so happy that you are here. Okay, this is gonna be a quick video because I already have a whole breathing video that you can check out right up here that will give you the actual breathing techniques that you need to utilize throughout different parts of labor. And yes, you're gonna have to breathe differently in active labor than you will when you are pushing. And even when you're pushing, there's going to be a few different breaths that you're going to want to utilize to help you prevent yourself from tearing. But these are two tips that I want to add to your toolbox when it comes to breathing. The first technique that I wanna talk about when it comes to breathing in labor and how you should utilize your breath in labor is through counting. A part of staying calm and keeping your breath on the right track is being able to keep it at a decent pace. A lot of times what I see in labor is when moms start to get really overwhelmed, they start to experience pain, or they start to feel like I can't take this anymore, their breathing pattern starts to become very quick. And so instead of having slow, deep, calm breaths, they're doing short, quick breaths, which not only reduces your ability to actually fully oxygenate yourself and your baby throughout labor, but it also makes you tired a lot quicker and for all of you who are pregnant right now you have already probably heard the phrase labor is a marathon not a sprint so if you were running a marathon think about how you would breathe throughout that experience you would not be taking short quick breaths knowing that you have 20 plus miles to run you would be pacing yourself keeping yourself on a calm consistent breath pattern so that you can sustain yourself over a longer period of time that does not change in labor so one of the things that I do very consistently with my clients, whether that is virtually, whether that is in person, or whether I am teaching the client and the partner how to do this together is to utilize a count, a breath count. Because if you can utilize a breath count, that is something very simple that you can do for yourself in your mind and your partner can recognize it if you are not breathing on that proper count. So the count that I like to utilize is a four, six count. That is an inhale for four seconds and an exhale for six seconds. All you have to think about is four, six the entire time. So as that wave or that contraction begins to build and you start to feel it, you're going to inhale for four seconds and you're going to exhale for six seconds. What I tend to see a lot of women do is they will inhale for four seconds, but they'll, they'll exhale for three to four seconds. Mama, you need to exhale longer than you inhale. And even if that means you can't get to that four count, then maybe you need to inhale for three and exhale for five. But the point of this is that whatever count you decide to choose for yourself, the exhale needs to be longer than the inhale because that means you're actually releasing all the tension and energy and that will allow you to sustain yourself over a period of time when you start to feel tired. I know a lot of times you will probably hear your nurses or your doctors say, we're just gonna hold your breath and count to 10. 
I'm going to urge you not to do that. And I know that is something that is very contrary to what you're going to receive in the hospital, but if you've watched any of my videos on this channel, most of the things that I share are going to be contrary to the hospital because hospital policy usually is not built to be in favor of what is actually best for mom and baby when it comes to having a physiological birth. It is very much so based on policy and convenience for the people who work there, not you. And so if that's something that you recognize, you probably should start with some of these tactics first. It is not to say that holding your breath and counting to 10 is a terrible strategy. It's just not the best one. So what I encourage you to do when we're thinking about practicing this counting is that when you feel like you're in a stressful moment, when you are exercising, when you're having a bowel movement, I want you to think about breathing in for four seconds and when you're exhaling or if you're running, exhale for longer than you inhale. And that will help you to stay on track. And when you think about it, a contraction is typically a minute long. When you get closer to the end, it can extend to 90 seconds or maybe even longer for some, but most of the time it's around that 90 second mark, 16 to 90 seconds. You are really only having to do this breath count for five to seven times. So if you think about every single contraction that I have, I only have to do this count or breathe five to seven times. That feels a lot better mentally than thinking about, oh my gosh, 60 seconds is a whole minute or a whole uh, 90 seconds, minute and a half. It's a lot different when you're just thinking simply about your breath count. Partners, you can help support mom on this journey by just counting for her. I do this a lot of times for my clients. I'll say, okay, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, Six, and I will continue to repeat that until the contraction is over. Okay, the second technique that I wanna talk about is humming or buzzing. You may have heard this before. It is the fact that when you hum or when you buzz, it is very difficult for you to have intrusive or negative thoughts. It's also really difficult for you to tense your body up. And what we know about labor, especially a physiological one, for those of you who wanna have a smooth, calm birth, it's really hard to do that if you are tense or if you are in your head in a negative place because it will slow the labor process down. It can cause your baby to have some distress. It can cause labor to hurt more. It can can cause the whole thing to just be a lot less enjoyable if you are tense or you are so in your mind keep telling yourself I can't do this I can't do this I can't do this but if you're just focusing on your breath count and then you're focusing on when you are doing those breaths humming or buzzing one it keeps your breath at a low tone and low tones help your baby to move down. But not only that, it also helps your whole body to stay more relaxed. And that is the goal to helping your baby descend into the birth canal and eventually out of your body a lot faster and a lot smoother. So if you start to feel like things get really intense or painful even, I would encourage you to think about humming, to think about buzzing, and I would also encourage you to remind your partner of this as you're leading up to your big day so that they can remind you. If they start to see that you're getting tense, your shoulders are getting tight, your fists are, are clenched up, your eyebrows are froed, like all whatever that could look like for you, tense could look like for you, or if you start to say these things like, I can't do this anymore, low tones, humming, buzzing, and it will look like this. You'll breathe in, and on the way out, you're gonna make one of those sounds. That could be a hum. A buzz could look like this. It also could look like a moo. Whatever animal sound you want to make, make it as long as it's a low tone it will help your body relax it will help all of your energy go down to your pelvic floor and it'll also help you focus in one direction for the duration of the contraction so the the mooing which is what i talk about in my other breathing video sounds like this and i don't want you to think that oh my gosh, this is weird, I'm gonna be embarrassed. Because nobody cares what you sound like in labor, except for you. The rest of us do not care. We don't care what you sound like, we don't care what you look like, we don't care what happens in your, your bodily fluids, it's all normal. This is a part of birth. 
your body does what it needs to do. The only thing that I would encourage you to avoid is high pitched sounds. So if you are doing a ah, or you're doing an e, or you're do, or doing something that makes your voice go high in pitch, that means you're tensing up and that means you're going the complete opposite direction of where we want you to go and that causes everything to tense up and tighten up and now you're doing the complete opposite of what you want to do so try to remember low tones low moans low hums low buzz low moo low animal sounds something that is going to help everything go downward in your soul and your gut and your sound and on top of that keeping that breath count on track so that you can stay calm. So I wanted this video to just be straight to the point, allow you to see what it looks like. Hopefully you can rewatch this a few different times, practice it, rewatch it with your partner so that they know what to look for. And then also make sure to check out that breathing video that I linked earlier um, so that you can put all of this together and know when to breathe, how to breathe at the appropriate time in the right way and keep yourself calm because if you can do that, this labor will be smooth as butter. All right, y'all, that is it from me. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you on the next one.